Just a tiny little minute, but an eternity is in it. Good morning, Crystal Cathedral. Follow that star. Follow that star. No matter how hopeless. All right, all right. Hi, everyone. This is Kai Nomi Films, and today I have a very special guest. Today I have a very special guest. He is a pastor, author, singer, radio host, motivational speaker, entrepreneur, trainer, father, husband, and DC native. So I would like to present to some and introduce to others Dr. Willie Jolly. Kai Nomi, thank you. Now, I must correct you. Oh, I actually am not a pastor, mm. but I appreciate the uh, I appreciate that great honor that you <laughs> bestowed upon me. Uh, I do have a degree in theology, mm. yes, and, sir. But I don't pastor. I am just a, I'm just a guy who loves God and loves mm -hmm. people. You know, uh, uh, a guy came up to Jesus one time and said, "You know, I want to know what's the key to getting into the kingdom." He said two things. I oh. only got to do two things. Love God and love people. Everything else works. It will fall under that. So that's what I try and do. Love God and love people. And so I'm grateful for this moment to be on with you, Kai Nomi, and all that you're doing and your audience. Welcome to all your audience. And thank you for having me, our audience. And glad to be here. For those who, I, I'll just add a little more. She gave all of the nice platitudes. <laughs> that's so wonderful. I am a former nightclub singer and jingle singer. Mm -hmm. who got fired and replaced by a karaoke machine because it was mm -hmm. more effective when I was in my career as a singer. And I, I was frustrated because I'd had the setback. I hated the feeling of being fired. I didn't know what I was going to do. And somehow I stumbled into a job with the Washington, D.C. public school system as a drug prevention coordinator Mm -hmm. trying to help kids stay away from drugs. I thought it was going to be a very short-term summer job while I was trying to figure out what I was going to do. But it ended up staying there a year. And in that year, I did the summer job, and then they asked me to stay a little longer. And as part of my new job was to give speeches to little kids about staying away from drugs. Mm -hmm. I knew nothing about speaking, but we took a Toastmasters course. All of the employees took a Toastmasters course. And the Toastmasters instructor said, after the second or third, it's an eight-week course, after the second or third week, he said, you're pretty good at this. I said, really? He said, yeah, 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 you're really pretty good at this. I said, okay, thank you. And then I went on along. And then by the end of this session, the eighth week, he said, let me tell you something. You're the best student I've ever had. And you could do this for a living. I said, really? He said, yeah, you could. And that was 31 years ago. And from that time, I quit my job, started speaking full time that, that right after that was over. And that's been 31 years. I've been that 31 years. I've been all over the world speaking. I've been on tours with Les Brown and Damon John. And I've spoken with Gladys Knight and mm -hmm. Billy Preston and on uh, tours with them. I've I've got a serious XM radio show. I've got a daily syndicated radio show on Get Up Mornings with Erica Campbell. You can hear me every morning at 8.20 with my motivational message, okay. Wake Up and Win with Dr. Jolly. I've done two PBS specials. I've got more PBS programs coming up. I've done uh, 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 all sorts of uh, programs uh, for corporate groups as far away as Dubai and South Africa, Nigeria, and uh, Canada. So I am really blessed. And this is from a guy who got fired and replaced by a karaoke machine. <laughs> and I always hear the the story because I did, of course, read the pamphlet where you did the interview. And it's it's really crazy how that setback really sets you up for a great comeback, especially right. and how right. In the years that you have spoke in front of crowds, audience members, even have fans that really, really love you, and you were able to move their spirit, which is really, which is really great, you know, especially for, you know, with our people being African American, you know. So that's great that we have a great leader like you 
that is able to move individuals, move them to a great path, and is able to teach them as well. Well, you're, you're kind, and, and I'm grateful that I've had the opportunity to speak for groups from young people mm -hmm. to older people to middle-aged people to seniors and try and encourage them that wherever they are now in their life does not have to be where they stay and that their future is literally up to them. It is not a concept of, well, you will happen to have some destiny come upon you. I like what Barack Obama said. He said, destiny is not a thing to be waited for. It is a thing to be achieved. You mm -hmm. make up your mind that you're going to do this or that or the other. And then you go about doing the work that it takes to get there. And so I'm very grateful that kids I spoke to in elementary school 30 years ago are now running human resource departments and are CEOs. And they say, your message changed my life. Your books changed my life. And many of them will call and say, is there any way we can get you to come speak for our company? Or can we come speak for our association? These same kids I spoke to 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. So I'm very grateful. So thank you for that. Of course, of course. Yes, sir. And um, and as we start with, the, you know, since we got a great, great introduction and starting, I wanted to ask you something, you know, just as the viewers are watching. Give us a little background about yourself, you know, like your childhood and your schools. <laughs> well, I, I grew up uh, in the household of a, a mom who was a school teacher and a dad who was one of the first African-American White House correspondents. He was a newspaper man. He worked with the uh, Afro-American newspaper, the Pittsburgh Courier, and then he got a job as a White House correspondent. And so I had this very unique entrepreneurial slash education family. My dad was more of an entrepreneur. My mom was an educator and both poured into my brother and I uh, growing up in Washington, DC. I give you a great story about entrepreneurism. My dad would take us to school because he, was, he, he didn't have the schedule my mother had because she would get up early. She'd cook us breakfast as she prepared for her, for her trip to go to her school where she would teach, she would prepare breakfast for the family and then she'd go off to go to school. So around quarter to nine every morning after we'd had breakfast and so forth, my father would call my brother and I say, okay guys, time for y'all to go to school. Y'all ready? Yes, sir. And we get in the car and the school was just around the corner, a couple blocks around the corner, maybe three blocks. And so as we're sitting in the car, getting ready to get out, he'd give us the drill. And then we'd overhear the other little children, their parents say to them, okay, Bobby, remember, what are you supposed to do today? Go to school. Yes, ma'am. Get a good education so you can get a good job. And then you hear another parent say to their child, okay, Susie, what are you supposed to do today? Go to school, uh -huh, get a good education uh -huh, so, you, so I can get a good job. Okay, have a good day. Then my dad would say that after he'd heard all of these other voices, he'd say, okay, guys, what are you supposed to do today? We're supposed to go to school. We're supposed to get an exceptional education so we can create some good jobs. And so my brother and I grew up, we were, we were instilled into our being, into our consciousness, into our subconscious, the importance of controlling your destiny. Becoming an entrepreneur was not something that I even considered as a possibility is what I was supposed to do. So I went to school. I got a really good education. I went to under I went to well elementary school in Washington, then to junior high school, then to Roosevelt Senior High School, which was and is still a prestigious high school in Washington. Then I went to American University, got a degree in psychology and sociology, and then I went to Wesley Seminary because I felt this this burden to inspire people. Now, when I was growing up, the only way you could inspire people. And if you were black uh, and you could put one word behind the other pretty good, <laughs> then you became a preacher. So I figured that's what I'm supposed to do, I guess, because I want to inspire people. That's the only path. But I got into seminary and I realized I know quite fit here. These are all real <laughs> preacher preachers. I'm not trying. I'm not feeling. I'm not thinking that. I want to inspire people. And, it, and, and I struggled with it because 
I couldn't quite figure it out. What is it? I don't feel the call to be a preacher, yet I have this call to be an inspirational, kind of uplifting kind of guy. I don't understand. So I go for a year, then I take a year off, then I go for a year, and then I take a year off. Finally, after a number of years, I finally finished, got my degree. My mother was very happy because she was focused on education. She wanted me to be an educated guy. But I got my master's degree, but I'm still not hearing this call to be a preacher. So I become a singer, a full-time singer. I loved music. I loved entertainment. And so I got a good education. And now I can be an entrepreneur. I can create some Thanks. I started a, a, a recording studio and I did jingles and I had a jingle company and we had a, a small uh, recording uh, op or operation beyond a recording studio records and so forth. And after seven years, that's when singing in nightclubs, singing jingles that I got fired, replaced by the karaoke machine. And I started this quest to speak. That's when I found it. After all those years, I found a way to minister to people, not in a pastoral position, but in a way to inspire them, that they could do more, be more, achieve more, that their present circumstances did not determine their future opportunities and possibilities, and to fire them up and empower them and infuse them with a spirit of Yes, I can. You know, sometimes that's all it takes. Think about it. I told mm -hmm. you that Toastmasters gentleman, after eight weeks, said, you can do this. You can do this. Now, think if he had never said that. Right. Okay. He inspired me. He encouraged me. And that's why I now want to come on shows like yours. I want to be in front of people like your audience and tell them, yes, you can do this. You can do this, what you're dreaming about doing, what you're thinking about doing, and even some things that you think are beyond your pay, pay possibilities and capabilities. You can do this. Yeah, you can. Yeah, you can. And I want to implore, I want to implore you. I want to encourage you. I want to uh, ask you. I want to beg you to not settle for the comfortable, the easy, but to go for the greater, the difficult. Look, there are three types of people in life. Mm -hmm. They're the quitters, the campers, and the climbers. Okay, now, the quitters see the big mountain in front of them. Okay. Mount Everest. They say, oh my goodness, that's a big old mountain. <laughs> Woo, and they quit before they even start. They don't even give it a shot. They quit because it's so intimidating. It's so mm -hmm. overwhelming. They quit. So they, they don't even go up the mountain. They settle. Then You're you, right. Yep. Then you get the campers. Now, the campers see the big old mountain in front of them, and they say, I'm going to take that mountain. They get up about halfway up the mountain, and they get to a place called base camp, where they refresh, renew, they get energy, they get their food, they get their sustenance. But here's what happens. They get comfortable. They get a job. They get a car note. They get an apartment. And they end up staying at that camp right there for 40 years because it was comfortable. But then they're the climbers. Now, the climbers start out, they see the big mountain, they get the starting up the mountain, they get to base camp, they stay there, they refresh, renew, get sustenance. But then they keep going. They keep climbing. They keep pushing. In the process, they got to go through hurricanes and tornadoes and avalanches and all sorts of uh, uh, issues, but they're the ones who get to the summit, to the top of the mountain. They're the Oprah Winfrey's, they're the Bill Gates, the Jeff Bezos's. They're the ones who get to the top of the mountain, the Tyler Perry's. They're the ones who say, I kept climbing, I kept trying, I kept pushing. I didn't get comfortable where I was. I didn't settle. So that's what I want to encourage everybody who's watching this. Don't be a camper, don't be a quitter, be a climber, keep climbing. And the things that you don't even think you can do, you will amaze yourself. You will be astounded by what happens. I'm astounded. I'm astounded that I've been in the Speaker Hall of Fame for a number of years now. Yes, sir. I'm astounded that I was named one of the top five speakers in the world. I'm astounded. The books. The books, the books, the books all around, the books, the books everywhere. I'm astounded. I spoke earlier today and 
I got a lot. I got paid, to, you know, some money to get go give a speech for 45 minutes. I'm astounded. Let me tell you this. This one. I was working for the school system. I was making twenty five thousand seven hundred dollars a year. Wow. Twenty five thousand seven hundred dollars per year for the school system. I quit and became a speaker. I'm astounded that right before the pandemic, I got a call from Dubai from a company in Dubai to come and speak for them. They flew me and my wife to Dubai, business class, Emirates Airlines. That's about $40,000 ticket, mm -hmm. the two of us. I spoke one hour, one hour, but I was there a week. They put me up in the highest hotel in the world. The JW Marriott in Dubai, all expenses paid. They took care of my expenses for a week. They flew me over Emirates first uh, business class, and then they paid me sixty thousand dollars for one hour sweet speech. I'm I'm amazed. I'm astounded. I and I would have never imagined that that was possible for this little guy from Washington D.C. who was a nightclub singer. And so I'm saying to all of you, wherever you are in your life, whatever you've been through, whatever you're going through, whatever challenges you've had, that you can do this. You can do this. Dream big, decide big, then do big. But let me say it again. Dream big. Dream big. Decide big. Decide big. And then do big. Do big. And let me, I want to help everybody too. I want you to go to WJ wow.com wj wow w o w dot com and go there to that site there are free gifts to help encourage you there are audio books and videos and and music and digital downloads stuff that i give to people to help them like someone gave to me when i was struggling someone encouraged me so i just want to encourage you go to wjwow.com get that and then go to win with willie winwithwillie.com w-i-l-l-i-e winwithwillie w-i-l-l-i-e that all my suite of websites lots of resources lots of tools lots of information a marriage site a youth site a motivational site an inspirational site a music site we got a bunch of stuff there for people to help them grow and then there will be a place for you to get access to my book it only takes a minute change of life or my book a setback set up for a comeback or my book turn setbacks into greenbacks or my book an attitude of excellence or my latest book if you got a, you're in a relationship or you want to be in a relationship or you get thinking about getting in a relationship or you're married or you want to get married you want some resources. I got a book called Make Love, Make Money, Make It Last, 10 Secrets to Shape a Great Marriage. My wife and I have been married 37 years, haven't had an argument in 35 years. And we wrote a book on telling people how to do it. They can do it like we've been doing it and have fun in them and make some love, make some money and make it last. So go to jollymarriage.com and get your copies of the book, get the bundle, get all that stuff. We got a ton of stuff. Yes, yes. I'm really excited about that, of course. Yes. And of course, I'm very happy that, you know, any of the viewers that do see this will take advantage of everything. Take advantage, read the books, read, read, read Dr. Jolly's books, because they're very, very, very motivational. At 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 they're very motivational. Well, thank they you. So you much. a head start. Thank you so much. And I'm so proud of you and your parents. I know your parents just such such godly, wonderful people. And so I want to applaud them for what they have done with you, pouring into you, encouraging you. And so you are blessed. And I'm honored just to be here with you. I really thank you, Dr. Jolly. I really thank you so much for you taking the time out of your really busy schedule to just give, give a moment to just really support me. And of course, letting me do my- All I ask is this. Here's mm -hmm. what I ask. Yes, sir. When you're a big, big star, in your field of, uh, of endeavor, 
might be at the White House, might be in Congress, might be an entrepreneur, might be a corporate leader, might be your own business owner. Just don't forget a brother. Don't forget a brother, all right? <laughs> when you're a big star, send your plane to come and get me and pick me up to lunch sometime. We can go to somewhere nice in your office and you can fly me to your fancy office and I can have lunch at your, your big corporate table. Would you not forget a brother? Would you do that for me? Of course not. I will never forget anyone that <laughs> gave me the chance <laughs> to be on to to really talk to them of course i was you know like i said i will never forget anyone that gave me the chance well i'm i'm, I'm impressed with you I, I see big things in your future and i applaud your parents and i want to thank all of the viewers who are watching and please stay in touch with your viewers follow me on social media follow me on willie jolly uh, on facebook or uh, at Willie Jolly on Twitter, the real Willie Jolly on Instagram, and then join us for our marriage show, our relationship show, every Monday night, nine o'clock Eastern time, on uh, A Jolly Marriage on Facebook, A Jolly Marriage on Instagram, and Willie Jolly LinkedIn Live, and then my XM show airs on Saturdays at four p.m. on Sirius XM channel one forty one, re airs on Tuesdays and Thursdays at six, and uh, then all my shows are on podcasts on the Willie Jolly Wealthy Ways podcast, wherever you get podcasts. So go get it and go make it happen. All right. All right. And of course, I wanted to really ask this one last thing, you know, before we sign off. So as someone who is, let's say like they want to go into motivational speaking like you are doing, and of course, you've been doing it for over three decades. And of course, you've been very, very successful. What piece of one practical advice can you give to this person? Mentors. Mentors. There are two types of there are two ways to get to any goal. Mentors and mistakes. Now both will get you there. One just gets you there quicker with less headaches, heartaches, and not subside your head. Get some good mentors. And that's what I encourage people to do. That's what helped me. Get a mentor and invest in your mentor. Invest in yourself. Go pay for it. Then take you know, take their courses. In fact, if you go to winwithwilly.com site, there's a site for speaking called you can speak now.com for people who want to get in the speaking business. They can get a, they can get access to my mentorship right there. Okay, so do it and that'll help or help you hope help you you know there's a long way and a short way. There's a shortcut and a long way. Take the shortcut, get a mentor. I agree, I agree. Now, I would like to say thank you so much, Dr. Jolly. Thank for you. For coming on the show today. Oh, my goodness. Thank you so much for coming on the show, taking time out of your busy schedule to come here, and just giving the viewers so much encouragement. My pleasure. And I'm so grateful for you inviting me, and I'm glad I was able to be here with you. And I look forward to great things, great things coming from your work, and all your viewers from their work. Blessings. Thank you. And so make sure that we also as well follow Dr. Jolly on Facebook, Instagram, Sirius XM. That's right. And listen to me, ever if you're in an area where there's a uh, Get Up Mornings with Erica Campbell on Praise Network mm -hmm. every morning, Monday through Friday, 8.20 a.m. Uh, Eastern, 7.20 Central, listen to my Wake Up and Win with Dr. Willie Jolly. But if you go and sign up for my newsletter, you get a video vision version sent to you every day free hello free come on free now. free <laughs> f-r-e-e -E. that's good thing free okay good thing <laughs> and always remember as willie jolly's quote and my father loves to say this quote if you do the things the others don't, don't do you'll have the things that others won't have yes sir yes sir amen amen god bless you god bless you thank you dr dr jolly for coming on the show today and i really appreciate it my pleasure. Hope to see you again soon. Tell your see parents. You All right. Bye. Bye. Did not take a government bailout. And in 2010, they've had $2 billion.